Hi, my name is Joe Foy. I am the Protected Areas Campaigner for the Wilderness Committee, and I am here today to talk about Spotted Owls on our uh, uh, Facebook Live uh, Coffee Talk. One of the problems I have with doing Facebook Live, and this is my first, uh, my second time doing Facebook Live with you, is that it's very unnerving to look at this computer screen and actually not see my audience. So I've come up with a solution in that I have imported an audience, as it were, here into our live studios, which also happens to be our kitchen here in New Westminster, British Columbia. So I'd like you to meet our studio audience today. Our studio audience will give me a sense of what I'm being boring, what I'm making sense, and most importantly, will tell me uncomfortable truths, which is what this whole presentation of Spotted Owl is all about. So our in-studio audience for you today. Hi, Christina. <laughs> That is Christina Narell, and Christina is not, uh, didn't pay a ticket, not, Christina is not a volunteer, Christina is not an employee, Christina is my wife, <laughs> and we've been together for over 30 years, so Christina's heard it all, and uh, she's going to be the way I tell if you folks are interested in what we're talking about today on Spotted Owl. So let's talk a little bit about being interested. If you hear something that you like, hit that like button. If you see hear something that you love, hit that love button. Because the more you hit the like button, the more you hit the love button, that means I get more viewers. We get more viewers, and I think you want people to be hearing what I have to say about the spotted owl here in the lower mainland because it's all about protecting the spotted owl's amazing fantastic habitat which is the old growth forest that lives here in southwest BC. I have my cheat sheets so if you see me looking down it means I'm trying to stay on uh, stay on script here follow through my presentation. If you see me looking over there it means I'm looking at the studio audience to see if I'm uh, losing the studio audience. Uh, now, here's a really important thing. If you have questions, and I hope you do have questions, please write them in the comments. I will get to your questions and we'll answer those. I'll also reserve time, a little bit of time at the end of this presentation to uh, to answer your, your questions. So uh, please write your questions off on the side and uh, and we'll also research, uh, reserve some uh, some time uh, uh, to talk about that. So spotted owl, the whole story of spotted owl, it, 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 spotted owl is probably Canada's most endangered species. I've been working with the Wilderness Committee for a long time, and for all of that time since the early 1990s, I've been working on the spotted owl campaign. Um, and it's all about uh, protecting old growth forests in the lower mainland. So Spotted Owl Range is uh, from the area of, uh, it goes as far north as Lillooet, all the way down to the uh, U.S. border, and from Manning Park over to the coast. So it really is a lower mainland uh, endangered species issue. The other thing is that one out of every two people in the province of British Columbia live in spotted owl habitat. So we live in these amazing, or in proximity to these amazing old growth forests, and spotted owls are an indicator species. In other words, spotted owls need old growth forests, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. Now, those of us that live in the lower mainland you know, through the generations, we've worked together to get some fantastic uh, protected areas that have some fantastic stands of old growth forest uh, around us where we live. So it's not uh, it's not as if we don't have uh, protected old growth forests. The issue is uh, that the spotted owl shows us is that we don't have enough old growth forests. Uh, over the landscape 
uh, in all sort of interconnected to actually prevent species from going extinct. And that's the message of spotted owls. And spotted owls tell us uncomfortable truths. They tell us the truth when nobody else will. And I'll explain, I'll explain what I mean by this. So yesterday I purchased this hat from the Wilderness Committee. I purchased it for $18. You could actually purchase this hat online from the Wilderness Committee for $18. If you like this hat, I happen to like this hat. Uh, Christina, yes. do you like that hat? Very much. Oh, Christina's being <laughs> nice today. <laughs> Sometimes Christina says she doesn't like stuff that I do, and that's an uncomfortable truth. <laughs> And so when it comes to old growth protection, it turns out that our governments have not been telling us the uncomfortable truth. Uh, our governments have tried to do two things, which is to give, continue to give old growth forests to, uh, to the industry to cut down, at the same time telling us, trying to calm us people with slogans like forests forever. If you uh, remember that slogan forest forever that we used to hear in the 1980s and 1990s it was all about how we could cut down forests and run them through lumber mills and yet we could plant new trees and have forests forever the spotted owl tells us by its declining numbers that that's not true that old growth forests are irreplaceable you can't uh, recreate effectively a forest that has thousand year old trees uh, that has taken thousands and thousands of years to uh, uh, form here in the in this this part of the world you can't cut that down in massive clear cuts and expect not to have uh, major lasting impacts and that's the uncomfortable truth that spotted owls tell us so the spotted owl campaign uh, is not just a campaign here in British Columbia. You probably have seen in the news where for the last 20 years, activists have been working to protect this, this little owl that lives in the old growth forest down in the United States, uh, in Washington, Oregon, California. And that has resulted in uh, areas being of old growth forest being protected and you might think that that forest is just there for spotted owls once again. It's the owl by its numbers that's telling us the uncomfortable truth that we've cut too much old growth forest. So here in British Columbia, when logging got started, there were about 500 pairs, scientists estimate, 500 pairs, so about a thousand spotted owls here in southwestern British Columbia in the lower mainland. Turns out I'm living, I'm speaking to you today from Sapperton in New Westminster uh, in southwestern BC. And back in 1859, right here, the first trees uh, started to fall uh, in first, in all this gorgeous uh, First Nations territory, the territory of the of the Stalo, the territory of the Squamish and all the coastal uh, First Nations territory here in Spotted Owl, uh, in Spotted Owl territory. 1859, the trees, these beautiful big old uh, growth trees started to come down. 1865 is when the first lumber mill got started right there in Vancouver Harbor. By 18, the 1880s, the industry was literally driven by steam. There were rail lines going all throughout Surrey and the big, big trees were coming down. By 1929, 1929, there was a debate in Surrey about whether to save the last old growth forest in Surrey that was at Green Timbers along the Fraser Highway. The conservationists of the day lost that fight and the logging continued and so by the time I became aware of the camp, the work to protect endangered species like the spotted owl in 1991, we had gone from 500 pairs down to 50 pairs remaining. 
because of the continued logging of old growth forests. And you would have thought back in 1991, we would have stopped. The, the U.S. was well on its way to stopping their old growth logging, but now we get to some uncomfortable truths. Our governments, both the uh, B.C. government and the federal government, continued to tell us that we could do both, uh, cut old growth forests and protect endangered species. So unlike the U.S., large areas were not set aside. The, the, the federal government and the provincial government continued uh, to allow the logging of old growth forests. And so, oh man, by, uh, by 2006, rather than just banning the logging of old growth forests, our provincial government actually started to capture the last remaining spotted owls uh, in our region to try a captive breeding program. That's continued. So we now have uh, something like uh, 21 owls in a captive, uh, in a facility in Langley, 21 spotted owls, uh, where they're raising uh, little baby spotted owl chicks. But they started that in 2006 and have yet to release a single owl into the wild. The um, uh, Out in the wild, the numbers have continued to decline so that by 2018, we were down to all they could find was three owls in the wild, left in the wild in the old growth forest. You would have think you would have thought that the BC government um, would have taken uh, action uh, at this in this dire dire situation with endangered species. After all, when you read their stuff, both the BC and federal governments say that they're concerned about endangered species. But we just did uh, a mapping uh, study of the Lower Mainland, looked at how many, it, it, whether or not the provincial government was still permitting uh, logging in, uh, in spotted owl habitat. And uh, lo and behold, we find that 300, 312 cut blocks in the last 18 months have been approved for logging in spotted owl habitat. And, uh, oh, it's so, ah. so the, the goal is now is to absolutely uh, ban old growth logging, not only in spotted owl habitat, but throughout all, all of British Columbia. All of British Columbia is faced now in 2020 with impending loss, wiped out of a whole series of species. Uh, the spotted owl is right at the, at the, at the head of that list, but uh, we know that Southern Mountain Caribou in the interior of the province are in grave, grave condition. So we really need to be uh, banning uh, the logging of old growth forests. And that's the, that's the guts of the Wilderness Committee's campaign and other environmental groups campaigns. What, what can the wind be? I mean, we've worked together to protect fabulous places in this region, like this, the Stein Valley, which is the Stein in the Katna Heritage Park now, the beautiful Ilaho Valley, which is now a Squamish Nation wild spirit place. So working with indigenous communities, we've got these fantastic areas protected. We need to go to the next step now and get all the remaining uh, old growth forest uh, uh, remaining in southwestern BC protected, and then look at healing uh, what remains uh, uh, of the older second growth forest so we get that protected. So what's at stake? Well, currently in our protected area system in the lower mainland, we have about 150,000 hectares of old growth forest protected. Uh, because of campaigning since 1991 uh, with our supporters writing into the provincial government, uh, really pushing hard on this. We've got a further 66,000 hectares protected in wildlife habitat areas set aside for the spotted owl. Going forward, there's over 300,000 hectares of unprotected old growth forest 
here in southwestern BC in the lower mainland where half the voters live. And that's what we need in this region to get a ban on logging on. Now, uh, in the coming days, I'll be traveling out to some of these areas, some of these 312 cut blocks that have been slated for logging by the BC government. So you can see on our YouTube page uh, what they look like so that you're better able to contact uh, the provincial government and the federal government uh, to, get, to get them to get a move on and protecting these areas. Here's a little paper map that our folks uh, Jeff Senachenko, our mapping, our mapper at the Wilderness Committee has produced. So stay tuned on our YouTube page. We'll be posting the, our videos and experiences as we get out on the land and travel to some of these highly endangered forests as we continue to push uh, for the protection of these, uh, of these uh, uh, critically endangered species. I'm just going to scroll down now and see. I'm going to take a breath. Uh, <laughs> yeah, one of the uh, one of the comments here is that Christina's always nice. Well, she's not always <laughs> nice, but I I have to kind of go her into. Uh, <laughs> oh, she's a pretty good audience, I guess. Oh, yeah, hopefully the uh, the folks. Uh, 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 hopefully she, the audience stays calm. So here we are. Uh, we have a comment here. How do we stop any more cutting of the old growth? Yeah, well, that's where we know, that's a great question. And that's exactly uh, where we need to go. And uh, so I should probably should talk about a little bit about uh, some of the some of the links uh, that we can uh, that we can put into the comment section to help you out. So I've got a link here that we can drop in now that helps you write uh, to the BC government. Now, I know, I know, um, we've all written so many letters before. All of us, probably if we counted all the letters we've uh, written, we've written thousands of letters. But hey, you know what? We've got a lot protected if we look back. Some of those beautiful protected areas that I talked about, some of the, uh, some of the gorgeous, some of the spotted owl areas that we've protected. So please, Use the link we'll put in there uh, in the comments section to write your letters to the BC uh, government. I also want to put in, it's also important to really let the BC government know that we know what's going on. The Narwhal is a, is a publication that uh, I love and that you should love. Uh, uh, they just recently did an article about our discovery of the 312 cut blocks that have been approved by the provincial government. We'll drop a link in there about the Narwhal, uh, the Narwhal article. You can learn a bit about the publication and really get the uh, get the numbers down on that. We need logging banned in uh, in our remaining uh, old growth forest. We also have a page uh, which we'll keep updated on the Spotted Owl campaign. We'll drop a link in uh, to that. And uh, and we recently produced a video about the Spotted Owl numbers and where they're going. That will all help you as you push uh, the provincial government uh, to ban old growth logging. Uh, I'm just going to keep an eye on my, on my list of questions, which keep piling on down here. Uh, Here's a great question. Why do these owls need old growth forests specifically? That's a great question because, you know, you can go into Stanley Park and see old growth trees. You can hike the, the entire 110,000 hectare Stein Valley and see old growth forest grows for the whole lake. Why, why do spotted owls need that old growth forest and why do they need so much of it? Well, spotted owls need the old growth forest because that's where their prey lives, the flying squirrel and the little pack rats that run around in the, uh, in the talus slopes. So they need that feed, but they also need to be able to hide out from their main predators, like the, the great horned owl will pick off, uh, spotted owls. They also, uh, need when the, the little chicks fledge, they need to be able to spread out to new territories. And that's, the point where we have put this beautiful creature on a slide towards extinction because with all the fragmentation of the habitat, it means that when these little chicks head out, 
looking for new territories. They get picked off by predators. They have a hard time finding where they're going to make their new territory. Um, and so uh, uh, what we've been seeing is the chicks, as they fledge out and look for new territories, will actually fly so far they starve to death. And that's how the uh, spotted owl is going uh, extinct, uh, at least in, in Canada. There are uh, pop populations of spotted owl in Washington, Oregon, and now in Northern California. So we really need to get our old growth house in order and start healing the land. Because once again, the spotted owl is telling us the truth. Um, and it's telling us that we're going to lose a lot more species if we don't get our act together and ban uh, uh, logging uh, uh, in the old growth forests. Um, now, uh, I have another question here. How, where do we read? Uh, oh, here's a good question too. So, do, do they have more spotted owls south of the border? Well, my cheat sheet, <laughs> they do. And so, we're down to it's effectively uh, functionally extinct. So, when you just have three spotted owls left on the landscape, you still have owls. But uh, they're not. Uh, we're not. Uh, we're not able to see that population be a free. Uh, a free um, to be able to uh, uh, replicate themselves. So I've got some numbers here in Washington State. So just south of the border, sort of just south of the Chilliwack Valley and the in the the Skagit Valley, we still have intact habitat in there. There are five hundred pairs. Of spotted owls in Washington State. So, besides the captive breeding program, if we can hold on to remaining old growth forest, if we can allow second growth forest to grow a bit longer, to not cut it down, to protect it, we have a possibility of owls migrating, moving in from just south of us in Washington. In Oregon State, there's 1,200 pairs. In Northern California, there's another 500 pairs of this highly endangered species. So it's all about protecting the habitat. Sioux Fox, uh, I see has, has a comment here, where do we read up on the plight of the spotted owls? Well, go to our website. We have, uh, we have the, uh, the spotted owl campaign page and we'll keep that up to date on a sort of uh, blow by blow as we go forward. Now I wanna make sure that you also know that there's a number of processes uh, in the uh, in the uh, uh, province, um, aim to protect old growth forests, or at least has the potential to protect old growth forests. And uh, so this is where it comes down to uncomfortable truth. People that will tell you the truth. Christina, how am I doing so far? So far, so good. Oh, that's kind of like what the government tells us. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not getting Christina to actually tell me the truth. You know, the first time I gave a slideshow, way back when, I, I did it at Mountain Equipment Co-op. I did the slideshow, Christina watched me, and after the slideshow, she said... <laughs> she told me it was terrible, and that's an uncomfortable truth. So look, there's a number of processes that are going on. The federal government, we have teamed up, the Wilderness Committee has teamed up with eco-justice. And we've threatened the federal government with a court case if they don't step up and for, either force the provincial government to stop logging spotted owl habitat, or the federal government should take over the forest here in southwestern BC, because it's such a dire situation. So the federal government is uh, uh, on a process, they got back to us, they're producing a critical habitat map and they're updating a recovery plan for the spotted owl. So we're watching that. It could be that the federal government rides in and stops just telling us what we want to hear and actually does something and stops the logging of old growth forests. The BC government right now is holding, they, they struck a panel on what to do about their dwindling old growth forest here in the province. The panel has produced their report. The, the government has that report, but they haven't released it. And we're hopeful that they will release that panel report in, uh, in the summer. Uh, there's been a recent uh, independent scientist report that, it was, that tells us that, surprise, surprise, 
The BC government has been telling us what we want to hear. They've been telling us there's lots of old growth out there, but in fact, it's almost all gone, not just here in the lower mainland, but all around. Those really iconic big tree forests are ghosts for us. They're, they're empty promises, empty words from the BC government, where in fact, the timber industry has been targeting those low elevation, old growth forests for a long, long time, and we need to protect every shred of old growth forests that remains. And here in the lower mainland, uh, that uh, we've got about 300,000 hectares of forest that we need put off limits to logging. Uh, oh, here's someone, uh, here's a comment. Oh, I feel this so dumb with writing letters and signing petitions as it feels not enough and falling on deaf ears. I get that. What about carrying people standing in front of the trees to raise awareness does that type of thing work? Well, the, our, so the question here is, I'm tired of running, writing letters. I want to get out in the forest and, uh, and make a stand. Well, we saw that happen in Clackwood Sound. Um, you know, and, and without that, I, I, you know, you go to Tofino and you look at that beautiful Mears Island and those beautiful old growth forests that are here today. Without the first, uh, without the Tlokwiat and the Hauset and the Heshkwit taking the sand that they did, they went to court and they, they protested, they did, did all that. And they, they, and then people supported them and those beautiful areas were protected. Yes, on all levels, uh, we need to be doing all the actions that we can think of. What the Wilderness Committee will do is we get the information. We get out into the sites so that you know what's going on. We hopefully don't tell you what you want to hear. We tell you uh, what the truth is and what the species out there are telling us. The spotted owl is telling us that our beautiful old growth system here in the lower mainland is near collapse, that our provincial government is continuing to permit logging of old growth forests, and that's got to stop. And uh, we will, as the year rolls out, we'll show you exactly what that looks like on the ground. And together, the Wilderness Committee, the other conservation groups, the people of the Lower Mainland who love these beautiful forests, and during these COVID times, we've realized more than ever how much wild nature means to us, how much wild nature will mean to future generations. I think we've all had time to think and reflect and crave access to wild nature. And so... Yeah, this is going to be a pivotal year in protecting what remains of our old growth forests. I have kind of promised, or I should have promised, that I'm only going to take a half hour of your time for the coffee talk. That's what we have here on coffee uh, and coffee talk time. Now, look, it's really important that if you're able that you donate. Uh, towards our spotted owl campaign. Hey, it's what makes it's what makes our our work uh, possible. Tomorrow, I head out with the uh, executive director of Eco Justice. We jump on a couple of bikes and we go up. Uh, we're going to go up until uh, one of these remaining stands of old growth forest that's been uh, that's been slated for logging. We're going to get the video. We're going to get the photos. I'm going to post those right away. We're going up because our mapper could produce these maps, do the research, know where it is, so we can put that information out there. We do that because you donate. If you can afford to donate now, please do that. We, we've got a link on here so that you can do that. Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's Coffee Talk. Next week, it's going to be the fabulous, amazing Peter McCartney, who is the Wilderness Committee Climate Change Campaigner. And uh, I'm not sure what Peter will be talking about. It's always exciting. I know that Peter was out there in Abbotsford just there a couple days ago getting that great drone footage of that terrible freaking oil spill that came out of the Trans Mountain uh, pipeline there so he's on it and you'll hear all about that and other stuff he's working on one week today on coffee talk thanks for tuning in one more uncomfortable truth maybe christina did you enjoy this week's coffee talk i enjoyed it very much <laughs> wow thank you
for tuning in next time here on the Wilderness Committee Coffee Talk.